functions. Yeah, you know, the monocles are those things that you, you think of them as snooty British people wearing. At least that's my thought when I think of monocle. You know, the guy who's looking down his nose at you with the one glass. The other trig functions we don't spend as much time on, mainly because we don't run into them as often in our applications. So we're going to hit the highlights. We're not going to go through the long, drawn out process of what does the graph look like and graphing the whole thing. I'm going to show it to you. But then we're going to talk about whether or not they have a period, whether or not, not they have an amplitude, um, if they can give you new phase shifts and that kind of thing with them. So we're going to well, okay. so find the graph of the tangent function. Well, anybody ever seen the graph of the tangent function? Kind of know what it looks like, vaguely? Hopefully you're thinking something along these lines. So I know mine looks really straight because it only goes from 1 to negative 1. But essentially it curves up and curves up. What happens at places like pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 and something happens in negative 3 pi over 2 and over here at 3 pi over 2? What's going on there? Yeah, why do we have vertical asymptotes there? How is our tangent function defined? How do we define it in terms of our trig function? Sine over cosine. The cosine function is zero in several places. Yes? Yes? As we work our way around the circle, we get x equals zero several times. Well, one of those places is negative pi over two. Another one of those places is negative three pi over two. Another one is pi over two, and so on. This also affects the domain of my trig function, my tangent function. Remember my domain questions, is there a denominator? Well, yeah, in our definition of tangent, there's a denominator. So we have to worry about where the denominator is equal to zero. I've got some good news for you. Because it's equal to zero in an infinite number of places, I don't usually ask you about domains of tangent functions. Or, by the way, cotangent, or secant, or cosecant, because they all run into a similar problem. Because the sine and cosine functions are periodic, and they get zero twice in each period, we run into all kinds of problems writing down, well, it's not really a problem, it's just an annoyance, writing down all the places where you're equal to zero. And so instead of going through that, we just tell you, here's something else. What appears to be the period of this function? Pi? Does that sound good to everybody? Looks like it repeats itself, so like between here and here, it's hit everything. Or between here and here, it's hit everything. Yeah? Looks like it's hit all the value. This one has no phase shift, but we could move it left or we could move it right. We talked about the domain. What appears to be the range? What? Yeah, so what do you mean infinity? We've got to have two ends, right? All real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. It appears to hit everything. How can we be sure of that? Well, obviously we can see it's doing its norm, hitting everything here. How do we know it just keeps going up and going down? never hits it. So it heads off to infinity or heads off to negative infinity on either side of an asymptote. So these are asymptotes, thus we know it's going to keep going. That's the definition. Are there asymptotes? Yes, we have Now I have a question about this function. Is it even on or neither? Even? How can you tell if a function is even? Let's just look in terms of the graph. How can you tell in terms of the graph if the function is even? Come on, guys. No, not no, not going up. It's not up to the right. What is it? Even is symmetric to the y. Yes, even is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. By the way, you guys might want to remember this because it's 
likely something like that shows up on the final questions about even and odd, not necessarily about this particular function. If it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, that means I can fold this over and they match up, then it's even. Is it even? Nope. Is it odd? How do you know? Yeah, how can you tell that in terms of the graph? Yes, if I were to take this graph and turn it around, rotate it 180 degrees, would it look exactly the same? Yes? Yes, it would. So this is a nice odd function. What does it mean for the tangent function to be odd in terms of the equation? If I were to write the tangent of negative theta, what would that need to be equal to if my tangent function is odd? Negative tangent of theta. Remember we have, we have in terms of the equation, f of negative x was equal to negative f of x for odd functions. So that means if I've got a negative inside, I can rewrite it with a positive inside and put, bring the negative outside essentially. That, those things are going to be equal every time. What was it if a function was even? How did this look in terms of x? f of x equals f of negative x. That was what it meant to be even. By the way, we're going to go back and revisit our, trig our sine and cosine function to ask if they're even or odd. What do you think is going to happen to the tangent function? I mean, not the tangent function. When I move the co get to a cotangent function, is it going to look exactly the same as this? the other functions. What function do you think I should try next? 